Well, today we're going to be looking at some merchandise from the 1970. Hello, hello, 1979 film *The Black Hole*. Are you enjoying yourself? Um, so, *The Black Hole* is a film that uh, has a special place in my heart. Um, I never got to see it at the cinema, sadly. Um, but then when I became a cinema projectionist, it was one of the films that uh, we used to show quite regularly as a sort of matinee. Um, it was always sort of classed as a kiddies film. Um, it's not really, I mean, it's quite dark and gritty in places. It does have an abundance of uh, kid-friendly robots, um, which it, when I when I was sort of in my teenage years as a, a fan, they used to annoy me. I wanted everything to be serious and... I think I, now I love them. I, I, I think the, the robots, Vincent and Old Bob, are just brilliant. Look at this, I'm trying to do a review. I've got a cat sat on my knees. You all right? Um, yeah, so I, I love this film. It's basically Disney, you know, wanted some of the Star Wars money, um, so they, they put this film into production. But it's not really anything really to do with Star Wars other than they put some friendly robots in it. Um, it's more 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea uh, and, and Disney films of that sort of ilk. It's a, it's a good film. It's worth watching. It looks really gorgeous. Um, the model work, some of the matte work on it is great. Some of it is not so great. Um, some of the matte lines on some of the internal sort of uh, shots where they've used, uh, you know, like um, uh, matte paintings to enlarge your ship don't work. The logic of the film doesn't hold water at all. Uh, there's various reasons behind the scenes as to why this was the case. Uh, but I thought we'd just look at a bit of my collection. It's by no means comprehensive and I'm missing quite a few things that I would like to have. Black hole. No, shouldn't do that. So this is the uh, the official soundtrack record and I've had this for years and I, I love this, uh, playing this when I was a kid. Um, what's really nice about this and they they used to do this with a few, I think Star Wars did it as well, is that you get so many nice pictures on the gatefold sleeve, but then you also get a section uh, inside of film stills. So this one is, it, it's got water damaged over the years because I've not really looked after it. Like I say, this is the version I had when I was a kid. Um, so you get a souvenir booklet. Showing stills, how we do there. And when I was younger, I mean, before you had films on uh, tape that you could watch, the books and things like this were the only way you could relive the film. So yeah, it's a little bit water damaged. I should really upgrade it. Um, but this, like I say, this is my childhood one, so I'm not, not going to ever get rid of it. I might just try and get another one. Uh, this, what's nice about this particular record is, again, like a lot of Disney stuff at the time, it's not just the soundtrack it, of the music, it's uh, special effects, sound effects, dialogue. It's like reliving the, the movie. And the, this was my version of the film when I was little. Absolutely love that one. Um, another record which sort of goes with it, everyone will remember these, is the old play along records. So these were um, storybooks on record and then they, they moved, made the move over to futuristic tape technology. So basically it's the story uh, of the film um, and it's one of those where it's, so it, you know when to turn the page because it does things. So in this one it says, uh, you will know when it's time to turn the page when you hear the chimes ring like this. Um, others had like uh, Disney ones where it was like, um, if you hear Tinkerbell ring her bell. So it's just a very simplified story of the black hole. USS Palomino was speeding home toward Earth. The very crew had spent many months in space searching for planets where humans could live. Although their mission was over, their greatest adventure was about to begin. Um, a great, absolutely amazing, 
absolutely amazing way to relive the film. So that's that one. And then another record that uh, came out, this came out a bit later, and it was uh, a single called The Black Hole by Nostromo. And they'd brought out a version of the alien theme um, and then they decided to do the black hole. It's basically disco black hole. Um, this is a 12 inch version. Uh, it's also got a, what the, uh, the B side is Gomjabar, which is a June sort of uh, piece of in, uh, incidental music. But look at that cover, that's amazing. Um, but yeah, you, you often see these quite cheap, especially the 45 version, the single version. Well worth picking up, it's a great version of the, uh, the soundtrack. That's the other thing that the black hole was great for was the music was really good. Uh, the other way you could relive the film if you uh, didn't have the record player as a kid was to read the comic book. Uh, so this in the UK we didn't get the monthly comics we got a collected version of the film story and this was in a, a sort of a one-off special a bit like they used to do summer specials. And this uh, Again, I, this isn't my original one. I had it as a, a child and it just got ripped to pieces. I used to cut all the pictures out and colour them in. And it's basically the, a reprinting in black and white of the uh, the American comic books. Um, recently I saw online that someone's got some of the original artwork and, and the original actor's likenesses were used, but then they couldn't get a right, so they didn't do it, so they overdrew. So like originally that would have looked like uh, Ernest Borgnine. Um, which is why in this film none of the humans look like who they should look like. It's quite off-putting, but it's a nice nice uh, adaptation. Um, goes into quite a bit of detail. It's uh, got some colour sections so you can read all about the film. Um, that's uh, Reinhardt. <laughs> yeah. um, there was a, a, a set of comics that carried on the story. Um, Again, we didn't get them, but we did get them collected in a hardback annual. Uh, annuals are a UK thing where, like Christmas presents for kids, everyone, you get annuals for all the different films. So this was the, the carry-on story, this time in colour, of when they go through the black hole and out the other side. Again, with uh, features and little bits and bobs in it. Um, also, together, these two make a great sort of little read, a great little story. Uh, you could also read about the film in magazines, or if you wanted to, you could put the poster magazine up. So this is the... Uh, you don't get poster magazines much now, but you used to get them all the time. So every TV show and film ended up with a poster magazine, which is basically a, a large sheet of paper, a poster, with some interesting bits and bobs on the back. And then this one is, is the Cygnus, so it's very nice. Again, you can pick these up really cheaply. They seem to be everywhere. Nice little souvenir. Something else you could get would be Cine Fantastique. Um, this was a very in-depth magazine series that each issue looked at a film or a couple of films. This one is the Black Hole Special and it is amazing. It goes into every detail of making the film. It's a very interesting section on how the original uh, suits that the people wore had built in helmets and gloves so when they're wandering about in the vacuum of space it makes a bit more sense but evidently they were very uncomfortable to wear never used so this magazine is a must for anyone that likes to film this is worth seeking out um, it's getting quite rare um, you're going to pay sort of probably about 10-15 quid for a copy but absolutely worthwhile you'll get so much enjoyment out of it again if you like the film Something else that uh, is quite collectible are the front of house stills. So way back when, when certainly when I was a projectionist, um, every week when you changed films over, you would have to change the front of house material. So that was posters, uh, stills. Uh, they don't seem to use them much now. They all have like big 3D cardboard stuff or electronic uh, promotional material. But these were basically just stills that the cinemas could buy and then display outside to get people in. So this one is the the cast, really nice. And then you've got a series of stills depicting scenes that you, you want your audience to see and go, oh, I want to go and see that film. I mean, who could resist Ernest Borgnine and a robot? It's Kate with a robot. The robots were featured heavily. 
a squatting Ernest Borgnine ready for action. They did them for all films, so I got things like Godzilla ones and that, but uh, the black hole set, um, again, not the uh, the hardest thing to come by. And then also uh, available were uh, action figures and collectible, I suppose you'd call them dolls or large action figures. So the this was these were made by a company called Mego, um, who made a lot of uh, great toys when I was a kid. They had the Star Trek line, they had Planet of the Apes. Um, they turned down Star Wars famously, and then after that, tried to get licenses for every sci-fi film that was going, Black Hole being one of them. I don't think it was particularly successful for them, because certainly when I was a kid, the bargain bins were full of the smaller Black Hole figures. The small figures are absolutely gorgeous. So they're much more articulated than sort of standard Star Wars figures. It's, they're well ahead of their time. They based them on the uh, Micronaut articulation and then G.I. Joe later used them. And these are so good. The likenesses are great. The sculpting is brilliant. They almost always have their thumbs missing because they have solid plastic hands and as kids you put a gun into them, snaps the thumb off. Um, I've only got a couple of these, but I always keep an eye out for them. This is Ernest Borgnine in his cosy jumper. And like I say, literally every bargain bin, every remainder house had these for sale. Now, <laughs> worth a fortune carded. Um, usually as well, it was generally you saw in the UK the, uh, the French carded version. Same with um, Star Trek Motion Picture, you'd get the French and German carded versions in all the remainder shops. I remember picking up well, probably a whole set of black hole figures with like a week's pocket money, which would have been a couple of quid. So they're probably about 20, 30 pence each. I love these as a kid. They were so much better than Star Wars figures. You could sit them properly. They moved. Like I say, the only thing it lacked, any way for them to grip anything. Um, the larger figures, I seem to remember they were around sort of five, six quid each at the time, which was a lot of money for a young kid. So I only ever had uh, a couple of these. Uh, these are all ones I've sort of purchased since. Um, they tend to have graying faces, which is a standard Mego problem. The plastic uh, sort of leaches the colour out of the plastic. So these I've all just resprayed. I've got a video on the channel where I respray Dr. Reinhardt. But let's have a look at them. So who wouldn't want an action figure of Anthony Perkins? Look at him. Really good sculpts. Great uniforms. Um, so you get little badges and everything with them. Um, good articulation. The only trouble is the Migos used to break. The knees would break all the time when you was a kid. I remember I bought a, uh, or I was given a present of a Superman 12 inch Mego figure uh, when I broke my arm as a child, as sort of a commiseration, you know, sorry, you've broken your arm type thing. Um, by the time we bought it, and by the time I got home, both legs had snapped. Amazing, not very man of steelish. So again, great likenesses, great uniforms. You've got Dr. Reinhardt, looking a bit melancholy. Uh, the only thing I noticed with him is his eyes are at different levels when I was painting it, which is a bit weird. Nice uniform. Um, and you've got Captain Holland, brilliant likeness of Robert Forster. Um, really nice uniform again. Um, this one's missing the you should have a bar across it that says Holland. Should really have a go at making one. Um, great figure. And then my favourite of all time. This is one of the ones I had as a kid. Not this version, but I had, weirdly, uh, Ernest Borgnine doll as a kid. I love this figure. You, it's hard to get one with the jumper in good condition. You've got lots of really nice condition mint boxed ones. But loose, this jumper is an absolute terror. Because one slight snag and you've got holes in it. So it's hard to get a nice condition one, um, but they're well worth picking up. Ooh, he's got some paint on him. Actually, that's because they're painted white ones, so they're not the original boots that came with him. It's interesting, I've never noticed that before. Um, but yeah, these are brilliant figures. I think these are my favorite black hole merchandise. So there you have it, that's a bit of my collection. Um, there's lots of other things I'd like to get. I'd like to get the uh, the two model kits of Vincent and Maximilian. I used to have them, uh, sold them when I moved house originally and sold my first collection. Wish I'd have kept them because they now go for silly money, sort of two, three hundred quid each. 
Um, I never had the Cygnus, but I would love to have the Cygnus model kit. Um, I'd like to get the rest of these Mego figures. There was a, a Dr. McRae and a, a Charles Pizer. Um, for some reason, the Charles Pizer figure seems to be a bit rarer than the others. I don't know whether that's because he was the sort of Han Solo-esque figure and so kids would have bought them him in droves and wrecked him. But yeah, I hope one day to get some more and I'm always on the lookout. Um, it's just a, it's a guilty pleasure, the black hole. Uh, it's a great film to watch. Put it on on a Sunday afternoon, cheer yourself up and then you can read the books about it. But thanks for watching. If you want to see uh, more of these style videos, like I say, I've got quite a few different collecting threads. So I've got like motion picture one I've done before. I uh, might do a Star Wars one. I've got a few Star Wars bits and bobs. Stocks who have got a massive collection. Um, but yeah, if you want to see more, let me know. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Please like and subscribe if you can. It helps the channel. And thanks again. Bye.